Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to continue our conversation about Euler circuits. We're going to talk about how we can tell, looking at a graph, in a very simple way, whether or not an Euler circuit exists in that graph. If the video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. So before we start talking about how to determine if an Euler circuit exists, I just want to mention that all of the graphs we're going to be considering in this video are connected graphs. So a connected graph is one where we can move from each vertex of the graph to every other vertex along edges of the graph. There's no piece of the graph that's separate. If there is, like in the yellow graph, then we call that a disconnected graph. We're going to talk about connected and disconnected graphs in another video in more detail. But for this video, I just want you to realize that the only graphs we're talking about are the connected ones. I also want to remind you that we've talked about in previous videos what an Euler trail is. An Euler trail in a graph is a trail that uses every edge of the graph exactly once. And an Euler circuit is an Euler trail that begins and ends at the same vertex. So in this video we're talking about does a graph have an Euler circuit? A trail that goes through the graph that visits every edge of the graph exactly once. So here, for example, is a graph. We might ask you, does the graph have an Euler circuit? Well, one way to figure that out, not the easiest way, but one way is to actually just look and see if you can find a way of navigating the graph beginning and ending at the same vertex um, covering each edge exactly once. So in this case, you might go from A to B, and then B to C, and then C to D, maybe up to E, then to F, turning in the middle there, over to D, down to B, back up to F, and then to A, returning to where we started. So yes, this graph does have an Euler circuit. It begins and ends at A, and it visits every single edge exactly once, no repetition. There is a famous math problem called the Konigsberg Bridge Problem. In the city of Konigsberg, there were seven bridges joining various parts of the city. And the problem was, is it possible for a citizen of Konigsberg to take a stroll through the city, cross each bridge exactly once, beginning and ending at the same place? So if you think of the bridges as being the edges in a graph, to find an Euler circuit in this multigraph would be the same as finding the described path. A mathematician named Leonard Euler published a paper in 1736 that explained why it's actually impossible to find a walk that would satisfy the Konigsberg bridge problem. He said that if you have any connected graph, if the graph has an Euler circuit, then each vertex of the graph has to have even degree. Remember, degree just refers to the number of edges that are coming in towards uh, and touching a particular vertex. So even degree would mean it has two, four, six, eight, or so on edges touching each vertex. And he also said that in fact, if you find a graph that has even degree on each vertex, then the graph has to have an Euler circuit. Using that idea, we can look at this graph of Konigsberg bridges, and we can look at the degree of each vertex and see if it's going to have an Euler circuit. Vertex B has a degree of 3, because there are three edges touching B. Vertex D has an, a degree of 3. Vertex A has a degree of 5. And vertex C has a degree of 3. Every single one of these vertices actually has odd degree. And Euler said every single one has to have even degree in order to have an Euler circuit. So odd degree on any one of the vertices means no Euler circuit. This is how we know that it's impossible to travel through the city of Konigsberg, begin and end at the same position, and cross through every bridge exactly once. This is a kind of exercise you're going to be expected to be able to do, which is to look at any graph and decide if it has an Euler circuit. You're going to have to know that when you're asked if a graph has an Euler circuit, that you're looking at the degrees of the vertices. So if you'd like, you could pause the video and work that out and press play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so we're going to go through each of these vertices and determine the degree. So vertex A, let's see how many edges are touching vertex A is 4. For vertex B, we have 4 again. For vertex C, 
4 again. For vertex D, we have 2. So far, every vertex has even degree. So we have a shot at an Euler circuit. Let's keep going. Z has degree 2. Looks like Y has degree 4. Looks like X has degree 4. And W has degree 2. So yes, every single one of these vertices has even degree. So according to Euler's theorem, since it's a connected graph with even degrees for all the vertices, it does have an Euler circuit. Let's look at another example. Use Euler's theorem to determine if the graph has an Euler circuit. You don't actually have to find the Euler circuit, notice. We're going to talk about how to do that using an algorithm called Flurry's algorithm later on in uh, another video. But for right now, we're just practicing identifying if one exists. So if you'd like, you can pause the video and figure out if this graph has an Euler circuit. All right, so we're going to look at the degrees of each vertex. So vertex A has a degree of 2, vertex B has a degree of 2, vertex E has a degree of 2, vertex F has a degree of 4, vertex C has a degree of 3. We could actually stop right there because if even one of them has an odd degree, then the graph does not have an Euler circuit. All right, here's another one. Use Euler's theorem to determine if the graph has an Euler circuit. The graph has all vertices of even degree. We know it has an Euler circuit. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video. Our next video is going to be about connected and disconnected graphs.